Okay, let's face it, we all have blah days. And even today in the Elevated Live Club, it was interesting that our elevators were like, what is up with the energy today? It is out of control. And we took some time before we dive into the topic of time management, which seems interesting because that goes out the window when we're feeling blah. But we took some time to really explore and what's going on and honor that this happens to all of us, especially depending on where the moon is. <laughs> So we thought it would be really cool to share a little um, insider tips on like what we do when we're feeling blah and how you can change that in your life. And the other thing that's really important to start thinking about when you're going into this is not just how do you react to blah days, it's what are you going to do when your partner, whether that's in your main relationship, whether that's your business partner, your kid, what are you going to do when they have bad days? Because it's going to affect you and, and knowing how to change yourself, your persona a little bit so that you come at them in the correct way and in a way that supports them and nurtures them is gonna be massively important because I've seen people have blah days that turn into blah weeks, they end up turning in their great relationship or great business and kind of flushing it down the, you know, down the toilet. And it's, it's easy. It's easy to let small things end up becoming bigger and bigger things. And that's what we really wanna talk about today is making it so that you are able to minimize that time. You know, if you can only spend five minutes or even five hours doing something and not letting it spill into everything, that's what you want to go for because blah day shouldn't turn into blah months. Yeah, that's one of the best things I think I've learned from you is don't, if it's not going to matter in five years, don't waste more than five minutes on it. I feel like I have thrown some <laughs> damn good five minute pity party tantrums and feel completely free after that. Like, we've got to express all that energy. And that's really what it is, is, is a movement of energy, whether it's high vibe or low vibe, we're always in this constant state of change, emotional change. And so it's important to have this tool in your box to navigate when the tides are low. Yeah, and, and one of the things you're always looking at is when you feel what we'll call a negative emotion, no emotion's really exactly negative. It just, it, it, it gives us insight to how we're feeling. And when, when you're feeling an emotion that you would consider negative, you always have to decide, am I going to accept this emotion or am I going to try and either tuck it away or fight it or suppress it? Like what is going to be my plan of action? And that five minute rule came from the fact that I've realized over time that when we tuck emotions away and when we, when we suppress them for too long, we explode. Well, repression is depression as well. Uh, and, and what I've noticed the most is that not only do we explode on ourselves, but we do it on other people as well. And a lot of times they don't deserve it and then we feel guilty. So if you're having a blah day, just go lock yourself in the bathroom. <laughs> it's true, I, there have been some days where Britt will wake up, she'll feel a certain way, and she's like, you know what? I think I'm canceling every single person for today, and sometimes that is absolutely the right thing to do. I mean, just- Because you'll do more harm than good in those moments. Yeah, and this is uh, another test of, can you bite your tongue a little bit sometimes? Can you decide that maybe this is not the best time to approach my partner about this or that? Because I notice what we do is that we have this goal and no matter what our mood is, we still attack the goal the same way. And you have to alter what your approach is based on how you're feeling and then based on how the other person is feeling as well. Because if you wanna get a collective yes from everybody when you're asking something or when you're negotiating, you wanna make sure that you're coming from a good place and that they are too. You know, I think about when someone walks into the room with like negative energy, like everyone can feel it. And the same is true with positive energy. So you have to be mindful that your blah days, although are frequent and you are not alone, or not frequent, but like happen and you can't avoid them, you're not the only one that they're going to, but you have to be mindful of how your energy then affects and creates that like ripple effect. Yeah. And I think that really kind of leads to the first tip here is to be nice to yourself. It is so important on blah days that you don't continue to add fuel to that fire of negativity or downward spiral. So on days where you feel blah, step number one is to go easy on yourself, to accept and say, okay, I'm, I'm feeling like kind of low today. Am I going to resist this? Am I going to fight it? Am I going to keep pouring that fuel on the fire and make it worse? Or am I gonna recognize it and go, okay, I see where we're at today. Let's start to implement some of these next tips to be able to be okay with the blah day. And this is one of my favorite things that I, I noticed that you've done over the years is that if you're feeling that way, you just let me know. Like, hey, 
I'm feeling it today. I may be a little snappy. I may be a little something. I just told you like not even an hour ago. I'm hot. I don't like being hot. Ugh, I'm not in like the mood. It's too hot. <laughs> when, when you can, when you can clue in the other people, it, it allows them to sort of change what, what their approach is going to be. And so that they can meet you where you're at and maybe give you a little support too. Cause some of those days I'm like, all right, so we're not going to be doing these things today. We need to nurture a little more. And those days don't, they start to happen less and less often because you come up with a game plan to deal with them in that moment versus waiting and waiting and waiting and then dealing with it six months later. And now it's turned into such a big deal. You really can make a little, like, what is that? Make a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah. And this is not just about being nice to yourself by saying things that you don't believe are true in the moment. Because then you're going to beat yourself up for the like inauthentic vibe that you're trying to set the tone for. Yeah, you're like, I don't really even feel that way. And then it seems like, ugh, what am I even doing? You're such ugh. a fake. I'm a fraud. None of this stuff even works. And, and you get this into that bullshit. feeling. This See, I'm mad. See, it doesn't work. I'm mad. So it's not about saying the nice things per se. It's about not saying the crappy things. Ugh. It's about avoiding those, like getting rid of those. And even if you do it, don't do it for long. Be like, okay, so I screwed something up. So this, this situation right now is not the way I want it to go. It's a little more messed up than I want it to be. But know that that's happened before in your life and that you've always grown through it or come out on the other side just fine. So realizing that while you're having the blah day won't necessarily turn it around immediately, but it will give you that hope for the future. You know what helps me to turn it around now? I just like had this thought. We should call it a craptastic day. That way you like are recognizing like mm, some, it's like some things. It's not my normal flow, but you can turn it into a fantastic day. So I love it. Craptastic. craptastic. fantastic. <laughs> I love it. All right. So the number two thing that we have is you need to be clearing the energy. This is one of the most important things. Like Britt said, when someone comes in and they're having one of those bad times, you feel it. Everyone else feels it. And if you want to start clearing the energy, one of the best ways that we like, there's a few ways we like to do it, but one of the best ways is to get outside. Mm -hmm. Get outside. There's something about the earth. There's something about putting your feet in the dirt. The vitamin D. Yeah. There's getting in the sunshine, taking some nice big deep breaths. There's something about doing that that can relax you enough to get you out of your head. Well, let's just talk about the science of that. And normally I'm the woo woo one, but I feel like the science really backs the woo woo on this nature. If you think about the color green, it actually vibrates to the hurt of Hertz of 528. It's the same frequency that our heart chakra resonates to. So chlorophyll, that's the green stuff in nature actually resonates with the same green heart chakra energy that we have. So when we're in nature, we're actually raising our vibration, which if we're having a blah craptastic day, then we're low vibe, we're we're, you know, swirling around in negative energy. When we get into nature, we actually raise the literal frequency. So when we talk about high vibes and raise your vibes, we're actually talking science here. Like nature has a higher vibration to help bring you into it. The other thing I feel like you can do when you're out there in nature is I like to sort of give my problems to nature. Oh yeah. So it's, it, it's like what I'm doing out there, it, like it, dumping my energy and mm -hmm. I'm dumping it. And I feel like because the earth's so big, the ground's so uh, deep, it'll, you know, it. It, it, it'll, it'll be able to take that on. Meanwhile, if I were to do that to another person, it may be too much for them. Because not everybody's built tough, you know? Not everybody has the thick skin and can take on other people's problems, but the world can, like the earth can. And if you go out there and you kind of give it and just release it and just have that intention of release, that's how you start clearing the energy. There are there are two other ways I really love to do it. Go ahead. I was going to say, well, that's why we in yoga and child's pose, when you connect your forehead, your third eye to the ground, it's really the most powerful posture of surrender and release. And anytime my forehead hits the ground in that child's pose, it's an automatic dump it all, pour it into mother earth, let it all go, let the mind melt. Yeah. So that, that almost brings up one of, one of my two. So the other two ways are one is I really like using exercise. I sometimes I sweat. And you know, you can, I'm not gonna say like beat in, a, in like a negative way, but you beat it out of your body. You know, you go up there and you, and you give it all that you have, you Express. know, maybe you run, maybe you walk, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it is yoga for you. Maybe it's a hard workout with weights, but it's something to where you are channeling that energy. Sometimes like you, you can clear it by channeling into something else. And if you can channel into physical stuff and get that sweat out, that's a fantastic thing. The other way that I love doing it as well is getting in a bath. There is something about the way that water holds memory. We listened to a podcast, watching some videos on some people who are doing some scientists who are doing amazing discoveries with water. And it, what they what they were saying is that water tends to hold memory inside it, which blows me away. And so what the question is is why do you get intuitive insight when you're in the shower? I notice that if I'm in the shower, if I'm in the bath, and my mind's quiet, 
a lot of times I'll get these, I'm like, oh man, I've never seen those dots connect before. But now that I'm here, now that I'm rested, it's almost like the water gave it to me. I also like to use Epsom baths. Epsom baths are high in magnesium. And so magnesium a lot of times will allow you to calm down. Um, it'll allow you to have that more relaxed phase in your life. And so sometimes what happens is when we're feeling really bad, we're too tense. We've been too tense or too stressed for too long, or we've been up with a lot of worried thoughts. And if you get in a in 15, 20 minutes in a nice hot magnesium salt bath, uh, it ends up relaxing you enough so that you just don't feel that same way. Same is true about taking a nap. A nap can do the exact same thing. So we have a few things, and you, you notice most of these are free. These are free things. Epsom is almost, almost free. So it's, it's being able to do these things and, and plugging them into your routine and not trying to always just push forward. Sometimes you have to, and you have to bite your tongue during those times a little bit because you're snappy. But go and add these little relaxation things into your life and notice how much easier it is to get out of that blah day. Don't just go down the spiral. Don't listen to that sad music. It's going to keep you sad for days. Figure out a way to start crawling out immediately. So, you know, my favorite way to clear the energy? Of course. Tell us. Tell them. Orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> How could you have a bad day when you're in a state of pleasure and bliss? It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. So there's your simple, forget all the rest of the tips you're going to tell them. <laughs> that's it. Or, orgasm your way to happiness. <laughs> oh, but seriously, the third and final tip that we have to elevate you out of a blah mood is to evaluate your thoughts. It's always the thought that leads to the shit. <laughs> It is always a focus of fear or worry or what could go wrong that ends up taking us out of the present moment and into a low vibing state of fear. So when you're having a blah day, it's really important for you to evaluate what are you thinking about? Where have your thoughts been focused? Are they focused on the negative, which surely is gonna create that energetic response in your body and then you're gonna be overwhelmed and overtaken by negativity that you don't even realize you were the one to start it in the first place. Like, Hashtag responsibility. <laughs> yeah, so there are two big things, or two big thought areas that we want to be looking at here. And the first one is, how are we thinking about our future? And that is, are we worried about our future? Or are we worried about the outcome that things are going to have? And a lot of times that can get us blah because we think about enough negative things over and over and over again, we feel negative. The other thing that we really want to be able to do is, are we thinking about the past and how someone did something to us wrong? A lot of times that can cause a blah experience, especially if you can't right the wrong. Maybe they're in a power position. Maybe your mama called you telling you some crazy stuff and you like, you can't get away from that because they are somebody who you can't just disconnect from always. And so you have to say, am I thinking about something that just happened to me and I'm mad at somebody else? Or am I thinking about the future and I'm worried about it? Those are typically the two reasons why we get in these blah circumstances. And so if we can figure out how to either forgive or let go of what that person's done or to make it right, and if not, again, let it go, or can we look into the future and can we somehow build in hope? And we do that by imagining a future that we like, imagining a future that's more successful. And that way we give our brain a little bit of a blueprint as to what we want it to actually do. Like what do we want it to go out and actually achieve? How do we want the circumstance to change enough so that it gives us what we want back? And so those are the two areas to really be looking at. And those are the areas to be start evaluating yourself and saying, man, am I just, am I just, replaying the problem over and over again and thinking that I'm going to find a solution to it if I just play it out and play it out and talk about how this person did this to me and they're wrong and I'm going to blame them. It's all their fault because a lot of times that won't bring you the new thing. But that won't help you take responsibility because if you're blaming somebody else, what you're doing is waiting for them to take responsibility. And a lot of times that person's not coming because they don't care anyways. And so you have to say, okay, if it's got to this is something I learned years ago, Brian Tracy, it was one of those things that I repeated to myself over and over again, and it, and it really helped, and that is, if it's got to be, then it's up to me. If it's got to be, then it's up to me. And that's a power position to stand from. That's taking full leadership role in your life. You're not gonna wait on the other people, you're just gonna continue to move along. So once you've evaluated your thoughts and you've recognized maybe there's areas that you've been focusing on that are creating some of that negative response, then you can shift into gratitude and start focusing on what is going right, what is bringing you joy, and that begins that upward spiral of positivity. So it really boils down to you when you notice that you have a blah day is to not beat yourself up and to recognize like, woof, this happens to everyone. This isn't like a once in a lifetime thing. It's gonna be a continual cycle of ups and 
and downs because if life was always up, then it would be really hard to appreciate it. And the blah days give you that opportunity to reflect and go, wow, man, this was a challenging perspective, but I realized that although some things aren't going great, there's a lot of other things in my life working out for me. Yeah, life can't be up because then we don't have challenges. And because we don't have challenges, we don't grow. We don't grow. We don't learn. Mm -hmm. We don't do anything different. Our life doesn't alter, doesn't change. We don't meet new people. We don't go, enough is enough. You know, there, there's such a beautiful time when you've struggled. And, and we've all been in that situation before where it just, it was overwhelming. And we come to a place in our mind, in our belief, where you just say, I've had enough. I'm over this. And what that causes you to do is to take new actions. And they're probably actions that were available to you at all times and probably your friends and colleagues and everybody have already recommended them to you, but now you're actually ready. It's the blah moments that allow us a moment for change. It's, it's where it allows us to take control of our lives and say, you know what? This situation, even though I don't like it, has caused the best transformation for me. And when I look back on my life, it's the moments that I didn't like. It's the uncomfortable moments. It's the times where I made me feel like, ugh, almost sick in my stomach kind of feeling, where I made changes, where I made the biggest and the best and most bold changes in my life because I got tired of suffering. Like, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to keep doing this thing that's not giving me the joy and the happiness and everything that I feel like I deserve, that, that I feel like this world was built here for. Like, that we're here to enjoy these things, not just have crap. But if you can think about that, if you can know that there's another side to this, if you know that, there, that you can get over that obstacle and on the other side you can say, wow, look how I overcame that. But I needed it because if I didn't have it, I wouldn't have done anything. I just sat here happy as a clam and just enjoyed what I was doing. I feel like there's two sides to suffering. You can continue to let it make you feel as a victim or you can overcome it and say this suffering is just an opportunity for the change like you talked about it really boils down to your choice yeah and so you don't have to stay stuck so if you've been feeling stuck look at what those thoughts are doing look at where your responsibility is and look it into the future as to what the outcome is that you want if your current way of thinking is not going to bring you to that outcome it's time for change so on your blah day look for the change. Oh, I love that so much. If you love this message, please tag it, share it, spread the good vibes and reach out to us, DM us, let us know at the Elevated Life Club what your aha moment was. And if you're feeling blah, then reach out and we'll send you a positive loving message. Also, if you need that high vibing community to plug into, you can sign up to become an elevator inside the Elevated Life Club, where we teach you these simple mindset shifts that create radical transformation in your life. So don't do this alone. We love you. We believe in you. If you're feeling low, then come get high with us. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace.